What's up guys? It's me. I'm back. Sunday, 4 p.m. December 19th. I think so. Almost positive. A little after 4 p.m. It was a great day today. Relaxing. We added a new member to our family. I'll post some pictures to the WhatsApp group. Anyway, I got this emergency service call. Customers got no heat. Haven't been there in about six years. But nonetheless, I believe they have a boiler. And it's gas, of course, because we don't work on oil here. And hopefully, we'll get them up and running. And uh, hopefully, it's pretty easy. And I'll get some video of it as well. All right, guys, let's get going. Good evening. Right. Got no heat? Hey, like I feel like we've right. seen each other before. I've been here like years yeah, right, ago. Right, I think. right, right, right. Yeah, years ago. I think it's just um, it's just not lighting. I have hot water. Okay. Let's go see. Lead the way. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Hello. It's the eyes. You have piercing eyes. <laughs> I can't forget that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So it's pretty much just. I think maybe it just needs to be cleaned. Hopefully not. It's is, there all, a, is there a light? Here? No, I don't have a light. Okay. It's all like all the pipes are cold. When I let a little water out, it was disgusting. Why'd you leave? What'd you let water out for? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to start off the camera. Okay, yeah. Let's see if we have a pilot. Yeah, just the. Oh, what happened to that? This plate is not here where it should be. Did you take this out, or was this? I just moved oh, you did. It. Okay. I just moved it. Did you try? Re I just wanted to see. Did you try relighting it? Nope. No. How do you relight it? Just with the thing. You see these this, these instructions right here? <clears throat> Operating instructions. If you follow those directions to the T, they're written by lawyers, right? So they don't want you to blow yourself up. Ah! So if you follow <laughs> one through eleven, <laughs> but I'll do the quick version for you. <laughs> I'll do the quick. We held this down already once for about 40 seconds. And as soon as we let go, the pilot went out. So we'll hold it down again for another like 30 or 40 seconds and see what happens. All right. Now. No. No bueno. It was nice, so I didn't even. Take all these furnace out. Yesterday. No, yesterday wasn't. Uh, Friday was nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. This thing dirty in there. We're gonna have to vacuum that out. Nah, I get. I have from the truck. All right, we're gonna loosen up this piece. Get out. Ah, get out, you. Bastard. Wow. Oh, yep. That's yeah. what I seen. So they said they yeah, had. It's a little. It's a little crack right there too. Yeah. They said they had problem with those. Yeah, so we're gonna put it. Alright. There she is. Let's see what happens. Voila, it's like magic. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta vacuum this out though. Okay. Let me get the vacuum from the truck because it's it's pretty filthy. Alright. Gross. Stand in there with the M18 vacuum. All that debris inside the combustion chamber. Get all that out. Much better. Much better. Alright. Putting all of the, the burners back in. They only go in one orientation, just like that. There's slats in the back, so you take them out, you put them back in. I don't disturb the one with the pilot tubing and the thermal couple. I just don't like to disturb it, unless it, it's absolutely necessary. Okay, last but not least, put that one in there. Now, I'm gonna take this plate, Put you back in there as well. Right. right in there. This needs to be in place when the boiler is running. 
as you can see, there's a hole right there. And the last time we were here, 2015, those were the results, All right? 9.9% of oxygen, 10 ppm of CO. Not bad. So I got the molar today. We're gonna fire this bad boy up. Let's confirm pressure. A little on the high side right there. Let's tap on the expansion. All right, let's check the relief valve. Oh, we turned the blade off. There's water in that bucket. They turned the light off on me. run for a little while about 10 15 minutes and then test for oh that's nice and neat they made zone valves look nice look at that okay <clears throat> just one observation with the volar a450 very very long startup time very long startup time but you can zero it out inside the house it's an approved method according to the guys over at Platsky. They're the manufacturer's rep for Volar. All right, we're almost done. Bingo, make sure the pump is on. Make sure she's up and let's do a combustion test. All right, so far so good. Stack temperature right around 375 degrees Fahrenheit. O2 of 8.8, .8, CO2 of 6.9, 27 particles per million of CO, carbon monoxide. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Let that sit for a little bit. In the interim, when I was talking about pilot lighting instructions, you follow those steps, one through 11, step by step, nothing bad will happen. These instructions are written by attorneys who are also engineers, and it's designed for your safety in mind. As long as you follow those directions to the T, you'll be able to successfully relight the pilot as long as nothing else is wrong. So in this particular case, the thing that was wrong was that the thermocouple itself was aged. And as you can see, I mean, it's not so much in the video, it's cracked right there at the tip. So this thing wasn't doing its job anymore. And what this part's job is the pilot flame. This is sitting in the pilot flame, you know, that little blue flame in there. And while it's sitting in there, it's heating up two bisimilar metals inside this little copper looking little tube, right? And when it heats that up, it's creating a small electrical charge. Very, very small. If you wanted to lick this, you know, while it was heating up, you're not gonna feel anything. We're talking about millivolts, right around 25, 30 millivolts, right? But if you noticed, I was pushing in the plunger on the gas valve. When I push this in, when it's set to pilot, I'm manually pushing in right a spring and a magnet right that allows gas to flow through the pilot valve and then once that 25 30 millivolts hits that magnet when i let it go it's going to hold the magnet and therefore proving the pilot flame is on very simple very very simple all right very good results i'm quite confident everything else is fine on here i want to address that drip on the relief valve because there is water in that bucket and maybe we'll tell them they should schedule a service during the week at not premium rates to replace the expansion tank which really wouldn't be a big deal we should also change this auto air vent which is right there all right that's not auto air venting anything anymore all right that water that water oh it's dry okay it's dry. 30 PSI. Yep. Okay. There you see it there? 30 PSI. 
perfect. And the combustion results are perfect as well. Beautiful. All right. While I'm waiting to get paid, homeowners go into the ATM, get the cheddar. Let me give you an overview of my Vito. Here's my Vito, right? It's the TP XL. I just bought the TP XXL. I got my Milwaukee thing here, all my little shockwave things. It comes in, I use this thing all the time. Mr. in the yellow. Right below it, I keep a small uh, channel lock. This doesn't normally, this is normally in the installation Vito. And I have a larger step bit, Sharpie, at three, I'm sorry, that's seven sixteenths and three eighths, a flare wrench, small adjustable crescent. This was a Kev's replacement, remember, Kevin? And these are empty. But here I got my Malco, uh, three eighths and five sixteenths. I got my assort, assortment of Weeha, side cutters, uh, linesman's, Klein, needle nose, 11 and one. I got uh, my, my stubby in there, my nest screwdriver, non-contact tester, ambient temperature sensor, shorter Nipix, long 516 driver, short 516 driver with a long Nipix. I got some zip ties, and again, the flat and the Phillip here, Milwaukee M12. Uh, Impact driver, rigid cutters, Milwaukee, uh, charge with flashlight, my Testo ambient CO monitor. Here, some CO2 cartridges. I just left them in there. I also got scratchy paper and in the back. I got my fluke meter and an assortment of wire nuts, the Legos, things like that. And I'm actually upgrading this to the, as I said, the TP XXL. I already have it at home. I'm loading it out with brand new everything. And I'm just gonna keep this in the backup. I also got my service wrenches there. So overall, this is what goes in with me on service calls, and my larger veto is on installation calls. Pretty cool. I got the little I got Teflon tape, tape measure, and electrical tape hanging off to the side. Works out well. All right, I've been sitting here for I don't know 20 minutes waiting for the chatter. I should have just took the plastic. All right, guys. It's a little bit... It's actually, it's 5 o'clock on the dot. Heading back home. Another customer. With heat and warmth. And they're happy. That's all that matters. And they got their money's worth. I built them for the hour with emergency service call. And they're a little less than an hour, granted. But also did that combustion test. Proving that the system is burning and operating safely. And that's all that matters. I don't care if you have heat, but if you have shitty heat and unsafe heat, then you shouldn't have any heat at all. Food for thought, guys. All right, that's it. That's all she wrote, folks. Tomorrow is Monday, December 20th, and we are going to finish up a Bosch IDS 2.0 four ton heat pump system. And yes, this system will be used as a heat pump because even though they have a lock and var fire tube combi, they want it warmer. And I'm like, oh my God, they like it Sahara hot. <laughs> so, it is what it is. You know what? Pays the bills. All right, guys, be well. God bless. Stay safe.